Good morning, welcome back to another video with a guy and his never ending projects. <laughs> this is just one of the never endings. So this here is a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited, but it's also half Overland now. Uh, it's got Overland suspension, Overland engine, the 4.7 HO, it's got, who cares, that doesn't really matter. So if you're new to the channel, you've not seen my videos for the last, uh, I don't know, eight months. Yes, I'm out here. I'm not in the garage because my garage is super noisy. You won't hear anything I say. So I come out here to do a voiceover. I will show you how I changed the transmission and engine mounts and upgraded them at the same time here just momentarily. Before we get started though, I want you to know I am an Amazon affiliate, which means anything I link down below to Amazon and you click on, I make a commission off of if you purchase something within 24 hours after clicking my link and don't click on somebody else's link between the time you click on mine and buy something. So everything I use will be linked down in the description below. Click there. Also, if you want to donate directly to the channel to keep me alive and keep me floating, go ahead and donate through Zelle or PayPal, which I have both linked down below as well. Okay, that's all out. So today's video, I am not a mechanic. I am not a special education guy. I have no training, no nothing in the mechanical world with automobiles and everything I do. I do because I'm a hands-on guy. I like to touch and feel and I like to do things. I like to fix things. So this is a completely uneducated, un professional video you are about to see so if you follow any of my recommendations if you follow anything I tell you that is your fault whether it works out or not it's your fault so keep that in mind yes I know I'm not a mechanic there's no need to post that down below if you want to make a comment you can say yes you're not a mechanic I get that I know I am me or you can say something constructive or you can actually try and educate me on something that I'm doing or maybe help others that comment asking if uh, I know stuff that I don't know. So that's all I'm trying to say. I'm not a mechanic. I know I'm not a mechanic. Feel free to post that I'm not a mechanic. It's not news to me or anybody else because I already told you that I'm not a mechanic. Clear it up. Let's go. All right. I ordered these polyurethane engine and transmission mount. Um, the same engine mount seems to fit the transmission. You still need the casing, the original casing, but the, the, the insert into that casing or the bracket itself is the same. So what I'm linking down below comes as a pair. There's red ones, there's black ones. Um, I opted to go red for no other reason than I just figured I'd throw in a splash of red down there. It'd be easier to see when it cracks out later if it ever does. Um, really no reason, I just picked red. So take your pick, I'll link them down, both down below. Um, so I started with the transmission mount. So the transmission mount, you're going to probably want a good size floor jack or some way of relieving the stress off of the transmission and then lifting the transmission up or the transfer case, whichever, wherever you can find somewhere to fit, uh, lifting it up enough to pull that uh, mount out of there, that transmission mount. So. I did that. Uh, I have a two post lift, so I'm gonna use it. And I have a stand that I use to take the uh, pressure off of the, the engine mount, motor mount, transmission mount, whatever the heck mount it is, I pull. <laughs> so once I relieve the tension off of that, I just grab some bolts. Um, the two towards the back uh, were pretty easy to get to. So the two up in the, at the front of the engine, or the transmission mount, were a little bit harder to get. I used a deep socket with a little swivel attachment on it and I was able to get those out, but that's a very poor engineer. Uh, I couldn't even fit, it was so close, I couldn't even fit a box and wrench on there. So that's a uh, poor engineering by Mopar as usual, uh, but whatever, we're gonna move on because every time I diss on Mopar, everybody gets upset. So, so you get the four mounts up top and then you can take, or you can do this first, it doesn't really matter, just once there's no tension, you can take the long one that goes through the mount out, unnut that and pull the bolt out. You might have to hammer it a little bit. Um, I believe I did, if I remember right, it's been a couple weeks since I did this now, um, and get that out. Once you get that out, as long as you pop that transmission or transfer case up high enough, you should be able to slide that mount out. So now you got the task of getting rid of the the rubber, the cushion, the suspension, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I found the easiest way after doing the two engine mounts and the transmission mount, the easiest way is pretty much what I did here and it's not easy. Um, I tried the sawzaw to sawzaw through um, on the two engine mounts, 
but both of them I didn't ever know I ended up cutting into the uh, the actual cat casting of the bracket and I didn't like that so with a hammer and a chisel or a punch whatever you got I hammered the forever living daylights out of this engine mount to get around I just worked around circle circle in my vise and uh, eventually it got to the point where it just popped out on the other side it was a lot of work did not film all of it because it took a minute it was probably a good seven eight minutes of pounding not gonna lie it was it was a lot of pounding now once you get that out i cleaned it up i used some brake clean um and i did gouge the side of the casting a little bit with the chisel so i grabbed a file i filed all that nice and smooth you don't want any sharp edges because that'll just tear this poly apart as it vibrates so i i uh, used my, ch uh, my not my chisel my file and i just filed the heck out of it cleaned up the inside real nice um, if you are a patient guy with attention to detail you might paint it at this point um, that's up to you I don't paint it because I don't care um, but paint it if you like and then you can put your new one in so putting the new one in I struggled a little bit until I just gave in and realized that I wasn't gonna hurt it so getting this in it's very slippery and I, I had I had a little difficult time um, but I did the transmission mount and then I did the two engine mounts and then all three of them worked out perfectly this way. So I took some wheel bearing grease, not because you need wheel bearing grease, grease just because that's what I had and what I felt like using. And I lubed the inside of that casing, uh, the bracket if you will. And then I lubed just a little bit of the outside of the polyurethane mount. I took the bushing from inside the mount out put these in the vise and I just started clamping it together. I have a five inch vise and it worked out perfect. It looks like the thing's gonna rip, it looks like the thing's gonna pop out, but I did three of them in a row. Not a single problem with any of the three. So just keep on cranking. <clears throat> that little lip on the edge looked like it was just gonna rip right off, but all three of them went perfect, nothing ripped. I just kept on cranking and cranking and cranking and it just popped right in through and it was beautiful really. So once your bushing, or not your bushing, once your polyurethane is inside the bracket, you can take your bushing and put that in. I also lubed that up just a little bit with grease, necessary or not, I don't know. I'm hoping if that has a little grease on it, if something starts rotating and spinning, it'll be the bushing and not the polyurethane. Just because there are imperfections on the casting that I don't want to uh, tear it up with because I don't really enjoy changing these mounts out. <laughs> so. That was all pretty easy, uh, except for the hammering part. So I then took that mount and I stuck it back up in the transmission area and bolted it back in. Something I neglected to mention when I was out there with the Jeep doing the voiceover is the engine mount for the transmission or the one that I put in the transmission is much more narrow uh, than the actual OEM transmission mount. So I had some of these uh, brackets, they are for Unistrut to bolt Unistrut together and I just cut those up to be really thick washers and one on each side of the mount seemed to be absolutely perfect as far as spacing goes. So I put one of those right there on one side, fished the bolt through and once I got to the other side I put the other in there and with that it was the perfect spacing. Highly recommend, I will link a bracket down below that you can cut it uh, cut just like I did um, it was a little fishy to fish it through but it went through just fine uh, yeah you'll probably want something like that because that space was way too big to have just the mount without spacers of some sort and it was very self-explanatory very easy nothing challenging really except getting your stupid socket on those two forward bolts um, with the uh, transmission I actually ended up having to because so the old mount was squished it was squishy all the weight from the transmission had taken its toll and the transmission was sitting lower so even when I jacked the transmission up to remove the mount out I still it was almost perfectly lined up to get the new bolt in right there so the transmission is now sitting higher with the firmer um, engine mount in there, transmission mount so I found that interesting and then I moved to the engine mounts so there are a lot of videos in replacing these and a lot of people did a lot better than I did so I didn't worry about filming or trying to get the camera up in there because it's really not a lot of room to get the camera up in there. <clears throat> but same thing, you're going to want your floor jack under the oil pan is what I did. Um, you might also end up finding that you want your floor jack under the uh, 
the uh, the crankshaft pulley. Um, yes, I know what I'm saying. I know a lot of people get upset about jacking the engine up on that, but uh, I feel it's plenty strong. But I am not a mechanic, engineer, nothing else. So take that as you will. So again, get your jack under there. You're going to take the pressure off your engine mounts. Not a lot. You're going to like go until your jack hits the engine and then like just a little bit more. That's all you really need. So uh, you just want the tension off of the bolts. And then you're gonna get, there's four bolts on each side, um, on each engine mount on the driver's side and the passenger, there's four bolts. And the two bottom ones are very easy to get to on both sides. The two top ones on the driver's side are permissibly easy-ishly, sort of-ish, kind of. Um, but the two upper ones on the passenger side kicked my ass. Uh, I was on the passenger side for a very long time, but I didn't know that yet. So I started with the driver's side, did the same thing, removed it, pounded that sucker out, put the new one in, and installed it. So maybe it's because the, these polyurethane ones are so solid. Uh, I had an absolute hell of a time lining up the bolt holes with the uh, polyurethane mount. Uh, it took a long time. Um, I did a lot of uh, maneuvering, a lot of up and down, and a lot of pry bars. I had pry bars in there trying to push the mount back. You know, I'd get one or two bolts in somewhat loosely and I'd pry it back and try and get the upper two. And it was hard. Um, it was rough. Um, by the way, when you put those bolts in, I recommend anti seize. Personal recommendation, unprofessional. Anti seize goes a long way now that I live up in South Dakota, from what I understand. So, uh, all the bolts I put anti seize on, every single one. So finally got the driver's side in, which kicked my ass, went to the passenger side, did the same thing, pulled that one out, cut it out, pounded it out, put the new one in, and went to put it in place. And these two upper bolts are such a pain in the ass to get to that I spent an excruciatingly long time, uh, honestly, probably over 45 minutes trying to get these bolt holes to line back up with pry bars and everything else. So maybe I just did something wrong. Maybe my engine was on such bad mounts for so long that it had just completely tweaked itself out. I don't know, but you may run into the same problem. The old ones came out easy, the new ones did not go in easy. So keep that in mind. You may wanna consider, if you're not up to that challenge or frustration, uh, buying the new polyurethane inserts and taking it to your mechanic to have installed. I don't know. Um, that is a that is a you decision, not a me decision. I decided to do it. I don't regret it. Yes, I was very frustrated for a very long time, it felt like, but they're in now. So now that they're in, let's talk about that. So now that they're in, I wanted to see, I was very excited to see how much more vibration I would end up with. Because like I said, the Nissan Frontier and the Nissan Titan, I both ended up with a lot of more vibrations uh, after installing the polyurethane mounts. So I grabbed that same glass of water with the same amount because I never took it inside. I just took it off the dash, put it on the toolbox, put it back in there and fired it up. And physically to my butt and my hands on the steering wheel, it feels almost better like less vibration and i haven't actually looked at the footage of the glass yet but i'm going to bet that there's less or equal to the same kind of ripple effect going on if you can see it i know it didn't look good in the camera uh but i'm going to bet that it actually rippled less because this actually feels a heck of a lot better than it did because before it would vibrate a crap ton now it still vibrates, but it's nowhere near as intense, which is backwards from my experience in the other two trucks. So if you're an engineer, or even if you just have a theory, comment down below because the only theory I got is the other ones were so worn out that the engine was literally going and now it's actually being held in place. Because you can visually see a difference when it's running too. I spent a lot of time looking at this engine running uh, I've also spent a lot of time looking at this engine not running, but that's beside the fact. So I've spent a lot of time watching this engine run, and with the old mounts, it would definitely absolutely bounce around a lot more. So I find it interesting. Um, so far, it's only been two weeks, but I really like these mounts. I will link them down below, as I mentioned, uh, as well as some anti seize and whatnot. And uh, yeah, highly recommended. No problems with those. So um, I did mention, I think at the beginning of the video, that these come as a pair, the engine mounts come as a pair. So if you wanna do your transmission and your engine mounts like I did, you'll end up with an extra one. I'm okay with that, I'm gonna keep it because I know just based off of the old engine mounts, when you fire this up, the engine 
rotates this way. So I get the feeling there's a lot more stress on the driver's side engine mount and eventually I might have to replace that one and now I have an extra uh, for when that happens, if it happens, well, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I just kept it because that's just what I did. So that's all I gotta say. So guys, highly recommend, linked down below. Uh, remember, I'm not a mechanic, don't know what I'm doing, not trained, nope, not professional, just do what I do because I do it and I enjoy doing it. And uh, yeah, check out my Amazon links, the Zelle, the PayPal, stay tuned. There is an absolute crap ton of videos on the WJs, there's a few different WJs in there. Um, and uh, yeah, tons of other videos as well. We've got the Nissan Titan, the Nissan Frontier, we got the Nissan Sentra, the Nissan 350Z. We've got the Ford F-250 V10. We got the Ford F-250 6.0 liter we, diesel. We got the Excursion. We got the, uh, oh man, I don't even know. We've had a lot of cars. Dodge Caravans, uh, Honda Odysseys, Chrysler Town and Country.